Good morning to all our family and friends and welcome to GCF Northwest Worship Celebration. It's another blessed Sunday to worship the Lord together with all our family and friends here in GCF Northwest. I would like to read Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3 as we start to worship the Lord today. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. This is what I call a blessed life from the Lord. I pray that as we continue to surrender our lives and obey God wholeheartedly, the reality of this truth from God's word will become true to our lives. Let's prepare our hearts and worship the Lord together. Good morning, everyone. Let us use this time to sing praises to our God and give Him all the glory. Let's clap our hands. Let me be an instrument to exalt and to extend Jesus' name globally as the waters cover the sea. Open the heavens, O oh Lord, and pour out your Spirit. Cover the earth with the glory. Cover the earth with the glory. Cover the earth with the sound of heaven. Cover the earth with the glory. Cover the earth with the glory. Let me speak what you say, let the sound repair the way, kingdom come globally, as the waters cover the sea, open the heavens, O oh Lord, and pour out your spirit, cover the earth with the glory, cover the earth with the glory. i 
seal the cup offering to our God. Let's continue worshiping our God this morning for who He is. And truly, it is a blessing that we get to experience who He is daily in our lives. And so let's sing this morning. In His presence, just exalt His name. Standing here in Your presence Thinking of the good things You have done Waiting here patiently Just to hear Your still small voice again Holy, righteous, faithful to the end Savior Just to hear your still small voice again Holy, righteous, faithful to the end Savior, healer, redeemer and friend I will worship you for who you are I will worship you for who you are I will worship you for who you are Continue to worship you. Thank you because our soul is secure. My soul is secure. Your promise sure. Your love endures always. My soul is secure. thank you because we continue to worship you every single day that you give us and so help us to follow you to obey you to be more like Christ in how we live our lives beautiful Lord Wonderful Savior, I know for sure All of my days are held in your hands Crafted into your perfect plan 
You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to the full of my life through your eyes. I'm captured by your holy calling. Set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. Lead me, Lord, I pray. Take me
Lord, we give our lives to you. And Lord, help us to continue to seek you every single day. Listen to you. Acknowledge your presence at work in our lives. That we may depend on the Holy Spirit. We may rely on you. To please you. To obey you. Help us to be quiet, to be silent, to listen attentively to your voice. Amen. Good morning, GCF Northwest. Let us join our heart together as we pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your holy presence this wonderful Sunday morning as we gather together to worship you, singing praises to your holy name, lifting our prayers to you, knowing that you are our merciful, loving, and faithful God 
who hear and answer our prayers in your perfect time and according to your sovereign will. We praise you and thank you for always keeping us safe and protecting all of us, especially during this time of COVID pandemic. As the COVID situation is already improving, we continue to pray that the spread of the virus will totally stop now so that we all could go back to our normal life. We pray for your faithful provision in providing for all of our needs and continue to bless us with good health. Praise your holy name for answering our prayers for the healing of our loved ones from COVID infection and other sickness, for our brothers and sisters who are still sick and recovering. May your healing hand be upon them and restore them to good health. We continue to leap up to you, our church, GCF Northwest. We stand in awe of your goodness and faithfulness through the years. We have seen your mighty hand working in our midst through our trials, challenges, and triumphs. And as the health and safety situation in our country improve and we're closer to be able to gather again physically, we continue to pray for your wisdom and guidance as you lead us to the place where we can gather again. May you continue to guide us in every step we take in every aspect of our church ministry and mission by your word and in prayer. We pray for Pastor Jerry and our church leaders, grant them wisdom and guidance. Take hold of their hearts as they continue to obey your calling and follow your will for your church. Strengthen them, protect them, and bless them along with their family as they continue to serve you. Lord, help us to have a heart to patiently wait for your answers to our prayers knowing that you know what is best and perfect for each one of us, and you are always in control of everything. For those of our prayer that you had answered, help us to remember to always be thankful and have a grateful heart, knowing you are our faithful God and a good, good Father to us. We continue to pray for our country. May you continue to grant wisdom and guidance to our president, to all national and local government officials on how they will effectively perform their duties in addressing the needs of our country. And as for the coming election this May, we pray that you will grant wisdom to our people to be able to vote wisely. As we start our sermon series on the Sermon of the Mount, we leap up to you, Pastor Jerry, as he deliver your message for us today. Use him mightily as your mouthpiece, as he share your word. Speak to us so that we will be able to hear and understand your message and apply it in our daily lives, bringing honor and glory to your holy name. Bless our time together as we continue to worship you. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ's most precious name. Amen. morning. Our scripture for today comes from Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 2 from the English Standard Version. Let us read together. Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 2. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, 
his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. Let's read it again. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. May God bless the reading of his word. Good morning! Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to God's word brought to us by Pastor Jerry Agoncillo. We will be beginning with our new sermon series, Sermon on the Mount, The Kingdom Life Agenda of Jesus. Our preaching for today is entitled, Be Attitudes, Living in the Kingdom, from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Good morning to all of you. It's just about two months until the national and local elections this May 9, 2022. If you have been or you are seriously participating in this election, I assume that you have probably heard your favorite candidates present their platforms and programs of governance or what they would prioritize or focus on if elected. There will always be questions and suspicions in our minds about what politicians tell us they have accomplished and what they will really do once elected into office. I pray that God will give us enough knowledge and discernment in selecting our next leaders. We believers must always seek the Lord's wisdom and surrender to His will for our nation and our lives. Let's talk about our personal lives. What is your priority in life? Who is the most important person in your life? And what is the highest goal of your life? To most of us, our answer would be God and our relationship with Him. That would not be surprising because we are predominantly Christian nation or God-conscious people. But it might be a different story as we dig deeper into how this belief is actually reflected in our personal lives. It's easy to say that we believe in God and follow Jesus, but in reality and oftentimes, we don't live like Him nor show the character of Jesus in our lives. The reason for this is because we only define our relationship with God or our faith in Him with our attendance to church gatherings and practice of religious rituals. We automatically connect or substitute God with doing religious activities such as prayers, worship service, fellowship, Bible study, giving, and helping. All this and other acts are good, but a person can have other motives in doing all this aside from God and being godly. It's not automatic that doing religious activities equals growth in devotion and relationship with God. We can observe people, even religious people, if what they say matches what they serve or how they serve and work, the way they behave toward other people and the attitude they have every day. The question we usually ask are, how do people live in a way that reflects their faith in God? How do people practice what they profess? What will be the standards to assess how well we are living and doing as Christians? May I invite you to pause with me right now in a word of prayer. Lord God, again, we surrender our lives to you. We open our hearts as we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and impress to our minds the truths of your word today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we will start with a new sermon series on the Sermon on the Mount, the Kingdom Life Agenda of Jesus based on Matthew chapters 5 to 7. 
These teachings of Jesus are sometimes called Beatitudes or the Blessings. It is the longest and extensive series of teachings of Jesus recorded in the Gospels. Early in the ministry of Jesus, he clearly outlined his teachings to his disciples and to the people who would genuinely obey him. I entitled this introductory sermon as Be Attitudes Living in the Kingdom based on Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. How do people live in the kingdom of Jesus? How do believers live their lives having Jesus as their king? Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 reads, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. These are the words of Jesus from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 2, as he starts this lengthy sermon on the mount. And this Sermon on the Mount was addressed directly to the disciples, but with the crowds in the background. It means that all that Jesus taught must be seriously kept by the disciples and those who would like to be devoted followers of Jesus. The Sermon on the Mount is not about attaining salvation, but aligning the believers' lives according to the standards he taught. It is not just acquiring good attitude, but living lives with a godly attitude. It's all about growing to be more like Christ, not just believing in Him. This is the kingdom life agenda of Jesus. I will propose three perspectives on the truths in Jesus' sermons on the mount or his kingdom life agenda for all believers and disciples. One, disciples live according to the standards of Jesus. Disciples live according to the standards of Jesus. What Jesus stated are the standards which his disciples and followers must live by. His teachings are the standards by which Christians must always base their lives. This is the agenda of Jesus, which all his disciples must align and assess their lives with. This is the first perspective I want us to understand from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in the coming months. These truths are what his followers must possess, not just profess. These teachings are what his disciples must live by, not just learn from. Many people are easily confused with matters of life, much more with the relationship with God. We do not just identify professionals by what they studied or from what school they graduated, but how good they practice their professions. A good doctor is good when he or she is able to help patients become well and restored to good health. A fisherman is good when he catches a lot of fish. A teacher is great when his or her students learn and live by what is taught to them. But a believer is usually admired by how many Bible lessons or verses learned and memorized or how many Bible studies and courses he or she had attended and completed. Jesus had a different perspective. All these are just means to an end. He looked at how his disciples or followers are becoming more loving and obedient with what they have learned and received from him. In his teachings, he focused on how Christians should live according to the standards he taught them. Many Christians usually judge the success of a pastor by how many members are in the church or how good his sermons are delivered. A church is usually observed to be growing and successful if it has a large amount of money. 
many properties and ministry activities and not by focusing on how many lives are changed and how members are being discipled intentionally. Believers and disciples are immediately branded as faithful followers of Jesus by their attendance and involvement in religious activities. Do remember this, the kingdom life agenda of Jesus is not just about learning, but is more on living. The agenda of Jesus is not just about professing, but is more on practicing and possessing the right and godly attitudes he modeled. Jesus' agenda is about being poor in spirit, experiencing genuine sorrow, being truly meek, and being always hungry and thirsty for righteousness. These are the standards by which people, the true disciples and followers of Jesus, must base their lives upon. My two recommendations are A, Assess your life according to the Word of God. See to it that God's Word not only inspires you, but more importantly, impacts your life. Dapat palagi natin tinitignan na ang, ang salita ng Diyos at ang ating buhay ay patuloy na mayroong pagbabago. B, align your life according to the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to correct and guide your life. Every day, dapat ito yung palaging ginagawa natin reflectively and prayerfully before the Lord. Live with Christ-like character and attitude every day. Live with Christ-like character and attitude every day. The second perspective I want us to understand from the Sermon on the Mount is disciples develop godly attitudes taught by Jesus. Disciples develop godly attitudes taught by Jesus. From the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, He already taught these godly attitudes that all believers must develop in an increasing manner. It was the famous motivational speaker Zig Ziglar who said, It's your attitude, not your aptitude, that will determine your altitude. However, Jesus' teachings emphasize that godly attitude determines righteous life in the kingdom of God. Believers must always see and check if their lives follow the right and godly attitudes taught by Jesus. Many, if not most, human resource practitioners and CEOs today are more focused on seeking people with good attitudes rather than high scholastic records and skills because it has become one of the key determinants of better success in work and business. In Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, we will find and learn that not only good attitudes to develop, His kingdom life agenda outlined the godly attitudes that will not only help us to be successful in our work and businesses, but also guide us in living righteous and blessed lives before God. However, developing godly attitudes is not easy. Actually, it is impossible if we only employ human efforts. These righteous attitudes can only be developed by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. The question is, how does the Holy Spirit develop? Godly attitudes in us. A. Believe in Jesus as your only Savior and Lord. Believe in Jesus as your only Savior and Lord. This is the beginning of developing right attitudes. You must first be firm and true believer of our Lord Jesus Christ before you can live out the godly attitudes He taught in the Bible. Ask Jesus first to forgive your sins and allow Him to change your heart from the inside. 
then you will start to develop good and godly attitudes. Have you trusted Jesus as your only Savior and Lord? Have you trusted Jesus as your only Savior and Lord? B, surrender your life to the Spirit's control moment by moment. Surrender your life to the Spirit's control moment by moment. The reason why some Christians do not have godly attitudes is because they have a surrender issue. They may have believed in Jesus, but they are unwilling to surrender their lives to the full control of the Holy Spirit. Christians must be the best people with godly attitudes in this world. I repeat that. Christians must be the best people with godly attitude in this world. Are you allowing the Spirit to take control of all the aspects of your life? My family and friends, let's pursue godly attitudes taught by Jesus by surrendering our lives fully to the Spirit. And then we will live truly blessed lives that God intended for us. Live with Christ-like character and attitude every day. Third, disciples grow in character modeled by Jesus. When we carefully study all the truths Jesus taught, in the Sermon on the Mount, it's not about information, but transformation. Jesus taught to transform lives, to change the lives of all his disciples and followers according to his character. Discipleship and disciple making are all about growing in Christ-like character. I'll repeat that. Discipleship and disciple making are all about growing in Christ-like character. Please don't get me wrong. As your pastor and teacher, I am for education, for teaching and equipping all the people that God brings to my life and to our church. That is one of my important responsibilities as a pastor. I do prepare and give my best to do what I do by the grace of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit. But if all these trainings and preachings will not result in you becoming and growing more like Christ in character, all these have not really been helpful and beneficial to you. All that had been taught and learned must result to positive change and growth toward Christ-likeness. This is the purpose of Jesus teaching his disciples and followers on the mountain. Growth in character, not just growth in information and knowledge. How do we grow in Christ-like character? I have four suggestions for us. A. Surrender yourself in prayer daily. Surrender yourself in prayer daily. Always commit yourself and each day to the Lord upon waking up in the morning. Wag po nating palalagpasin ang umaga, ang yung oras na paggising natin. Dapat po ikukumit na po kagad at isosurrender natin yung buhay natin sa ating Panginoon. B. Obey Jesus immediately. Don't think of excuses but seek the opportunities you can obey God. Huwag po natin i-delay ang pagsunod sa Panginoon at iisipin natin yung hirap at yung mga hindrances and obstacle. Kundi isipin po natin kagad paano po natin masunod kaagad ang ating Panginoong Yesus. See, trust Jesus fully. Trust Jesus fully. Especially during times of difficulty and hardships. Stay with Jesus and do not stray away when you fail and fallen into sin. Pagsasamantalahan po tayo, lalo ng kaaway at masisira ang buhay natin, kung tayo ay nagkasala na at bumagsak na, lalayo pa tayo sa Diyos. Let's go back and trust Jesus fully. D, thank God constantly. Thank God constantly. 
the best expression of a Christian's faith is gratitude to God in everything, good and bad. Tough and trying times must always lead us not just to trust Him, but to thank God wholeheartedly. Dapat po matutunan po natin magpasalamat palagi sa Diyos. Ano man po ang sitwasyon natin sa buhay. If we will learn to trust God, we will continue to grow in our character like that of our Lord Jesus Christ. Live with Christ-like character and attitude every day. Live with Christ-like character and attitude every day. Maraming nagsasabi na ang kanilang high school life ang best and most enjoyable period ng kanilang buhay. Para po sa akin, ang masasabi kong pinaka-memorable ay noong naging tunay akong kristyano. Nung tinanggap ko si Jesus bilang personal at sarili kong Diyos at tagapagligtas, mula noon ay natuto akong magseryoso sa aking pag-aaral. Natutunan ko ang tunay at mabuting layunin ng Diyos para sa aking buhay. Tinawag ako ng Panginoon na paglingkuran siya bilang isang full-time worker at servant. Isa-isa at patuloy pa rin na binabago ni Jesus ang aking masasamang ugali at gawi. Hindi pa po ako perpekto, malayo pa po. Pero sa biyaya ng Diyos at sa tulong ng Banala Espiritu ay nagpapatuloy pa rin po akong lumalago at naglilingkod sa ating Diyos. Kahit patumanda na ako, eto ang patuloy kong sinasabi kasama ang aking asawa. Kailanman, hindi kami pinagkulang ng Diyos. Marami mga pagkakataon na mahirap ang buhay. Pero sa pangkalatan, nakita at naranasan ko at ng aking buong pamilya ang lubos na kabutihan at katapatan ng Diyos sa lahat ng pagkakataon. In summary, disciples live according to the standards of Jesus. Disciples develop godly attitudes taught by Jesus. Disciples grow in character modeled by Jesus. As we apply these truths and principles we have learned, as we continue to journey through the Sermon on the Mount, the Kingdom Life Agenda of Jesus, I want us to make Jesus as our King. And I will use the word King in an acronym for our application. K stands for know. Get to know Jesus better. Knowing is not just about information, but also about intimacy and internal transformation by Jesus. I stands for inspire. Be inspired by Jesus every day. All our motivations and motives must be from and for Jesus. Our lives must be aligned to the attitudes that Jesus taught. N stands for nurture. Nurture yourself and your soul in Jesus' teachings. There will be a lot of teachings that we will learn from the Sermon on the Mount in our sermon series. Let's feast on this spiritual food and lessons from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Take all these words and commands as food for your soul that will nourish us for growth for a lifetime. G stands for glorify. Our ultimate goal is to glorify Jesus in the way we live and with all that we do for Him. As we learn all the precious truths, may we all the more be renewed in our minds and be transformed in our lives to forever worship our only true living God Almighty. Make Jesus as your only King. Live with Christ-like character and attitude every day. Live with Christ-like character and attitude every day. Let's close our time in a word of prayer. 
Again, Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity for us to learn and listen to you. Salamat Panginoon sa pagkakataon na kami po ay sama-sama pong sumamba sa inyo at matuto mula sa inyong salita. Allow us, Lord, to reflect more on the words that you have taught us and impressed to our hearts today. Allow us to respond in wholehearted obedience to you so that our lives will never be the same when we started today, but we see the Holy Spirit continuously working in our lives toward growing in Christ-likeness. Salamat Panginoon at muli ang aming pong hiling ay patuloy po ang iyo pong pagsama at ang presensya ang aming pong maranasan. And truly, we would live a blessed life, a life worth living in your kingdom, having those godly attitudes. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much to all our family and friends who have joined us in worshiping the Lord together. I would like to invite all the parents with young kids to bring them to our Sunday school room at 11, 11 o'clock in the morning. And to all our family and friends who have uh, their growth groups, please join your growth group and have time for reflection and prayer. And also there is a survey in our Facebook uh, page about our face-to-face -face, uh, gathering soon. So please do take time to fill this up so that we will know what the Lord has been impressing upon you so that our leaders will be able also to decide accordingly. God bless us all and have a blessed day to all of you.